a couple walked through the door of a Santa Fe art gallery late Friday afternoon. Their appearance was accompanied by a gust of cold wind. Inside, they were greeted by a warm, cozy atmosphere filled with the joyful sounds of Christmas songs. There were only two weeks left until Christmas. Hector Sanchez, co-owner of the gallery and local artist, looked around happily as they entered. Apparently, they were a wealthy couple who could add to their already handsome Christmas profits. The man was of large build and was wearing an expensive gray Italian Brunello Cusinelli winter coat. The woman was a sight to behold, laughing brightly as she shook snow from her long, curly blonde hair. She was wearing a vibrant red wool Gucci coat that no doubt matched the price of her husband's coat. The beautiful woman looked to be in her early twenties and was certainly a trophy wife, as her husband was fifteen or twenty years older. Oh yes, these two were welcome clients. Feliz Navidad, my friends, Hector exclaimed cheerfully. Come in, come in from the cold. Let me help you take off your coat and treat you to some Christmas eggnog. The couple gratefully accepted the hospitality. Maria, Hector's sister and co-owner of the gallery, joined them. Quickly, the couple's coats were already hanging on the rack behind the register, and they all had mugs of warm eggnog and rum in their hands. The aroma of nutmeg and joyful music hung in the air as everyone got to know each other. The couple introduced themselves as David and Sandy Harrison from Dallas. He was a major financier and came to town for a meeting on Monday. Neither Sandy nor David had been to Santa Fe before, so they decided to spend the weekend in the city sightseeing and Christmas shopping. Hector and Maria's beaming smiles left no doubt that they were delighted to see these wealthy clients come to their gallery to buy Christmas gifts. Perhaps they have large families and many friends who need gifts. How can we help you, my friends? Hector asked kindly. Maria creates magnificent jewelry in modern and traditional styles. I work with graphics in various techniques, but my favorite is oil painting. Our brother Ferdinand teaches art at the University of New Mexico in Albuquerque. Sometimes we persuade him to leave the academic world to create truly exquisite ceramics. Santa Fe is something of a regional art mecca, so we also feature a lot of local artists from New Mexico, Colorado, and Arizona. I'm sure we'll have something you'll like. David nodded and said cheerfully. Great, great. I'm looking for something special in jewelry for my lovely wife as a Christmas gift. And Sandy is here looking for a painting for the house. Do you think you can help? Oh, absolutely. David, why don't you come with Maria and she'll show you her jewelry and I'll show Sandy our paintings. Maria smiled. Come on, David. I have some wonderful things I want to show you. As Maria turned to lead David toward the jewelry displays, he frowned and said, Wait, what is this? He reached behind Mary's ear and pulled out a four-inch Christmas angel toy. He held it up so everyone could see. Maria gasped, touched her ear, and muttered, What? Where did this come from? Then everyone realized that it was a clever trick that David had pulled off. Everyone laughed. David bowed and handed the angel to Mary and said with a laugh, Here, for your Christmas tree. Maria and David, laughing and chatting animatedly, headed towards the jewelry displays. Hector smiled at Sandy. David is good. He even deceived me. Sandy replied with amusement in her voice. Oh, yes. Sometimes it seems to me that he never grew up and forever remained a ten-year-old naughty boy. He always makes fun of everyone, especially me. No one is safe. Hector raised his eyebrows. This might be interesting. Sandy laughed with a hint of cynicism. That's putting it mildly. It's funny until you want to kill him. She shook her head in annoyance and then added cheerfully, Let's go see if you have a painting for me. As Hector and Sandy walked toward the back of the gallery, where paintings hung on the walls, Sandy explained what she was looking for. In the fall, we added a large living room to the house. We use it to meet with friends, watch TV, and the like. We have a bar across from the pool that can seat three couples, and I'm looking for something to hang behind the bar. Hector nodded, listening carefully. Looks like we need a pretty big picture. What exactly do you want to express with this piece of art? What effect do you want to achieve? I want it to be original and attract attention. 
something provocative that will spark conversation among guests, even shocking. I was thinking about an Art Nouveau painting, but over the past month, I've been touring galleries in Dallas and Fort Worth, and nothing has grabbed my attention. Now I'm starting from scratch and just looking for options. In Santa Fe, I thought, maybe I'd find something with a southwestern flavor that wouldn't be out of place in Dallas. Hector and Sandy examined the various paintings as they moved through the rows. They were all interesting, with different themes, a monstrous storm covering the desert, an emaciated old man in the old town of Santa Fe, fiery sunsets, a Hopi shaman ceremony, a mesmerizing image of the ruins of Chaco Canyon with a stormy sky, modernist paintings with elements of the Southwest. But none of them suited Sandy. Hector frowned and asked thoughtfully, What about nudes? Nude? Sandy asked doubtfully, Isn't this too old fashioned? Hector laughed. The nude is an invariable element in art. Art should be about the human experience. Sex is definitely an important part of this experience. Therefore, art must also reflect the erotic side of life in order to remain relevant. Nude went out of fashion for a while, but is now coming back with renewed vigor. In the last year, I have sold four or five of these paintings to clients in New York and Los Angeles. If you find the right job, it will definitely make a splash. Is it true? I didn't even think about nudes. Do you have anything now? Yes, I think I have three paintings. Let's see. Hector led Sandy to the next row, where three paintings hung. One of them depicted a naked woman with curvaceous figures lying on a rumpled bed and smiling at the viewer with a provocative smile. She looked like a real woman, not an idealized nymph. She was about 40. Wrinkles and traces of the life she had lived could already be seen on her face. She was a little plump, but still attractive, although she did not have the classic Hollywood beauty. She was an ordinary woman, so to speak. However, she exuded vitality and sensual sexual energy that seemed to literally burst from the canvas. In the second picture, perhaps the same model looks shafted from behind a curtain with her back turned three quarters to the viewer. The third painting was done in a more modern, minimalist style. It depicted the slender legs, rounded buttocks, and lower back of a thin woman standing with her back to the viewer in an empty room. She was wearing only cowboy boots, and in her hands she held a whip behind her back. Sandy studied the paintings carefully and remarked, Interesting. I know what you mean. Paintings like these will definitely attract attention. Just what I need. Hector replied, Oh yes, the first and second paintings are mine. The third is the work of an artist from Taos. His model is my ex-wife Monica. She sleeps with him and poses for him from time to time. Monica did the same thing when we were married. Sandy had a hard time holding back a surprised laugh and exhaled. I know that artists have a reputation for being avant-garde, but this seems a little strange even for you. Do you sleep with all your models too? Hector grinned. With the majority, but not with everyone. Sandy became interested and pointed to the first two paintings. What about this woman? Hector laughed. Oh yes, this is my brother Ferdinand's wife, Christine. She is from Iceland and has fairly liberal views on sex. My brother can be a bit of an academic snob, but Christine, as you can see, is a beautiful and spirited woman. She comes to visit us every few months to relax a little, so to speak. Sandy shook her head in surprise and asked, Does your brother mind? You're his brother, and yet you sleep with his wife, and then post her nude painting for sale? Hector shrugged. Christine doesn't give him a choice. He's in love with her and just lets her do whatever she wants. It works for them. And of course, for me too. Sandy shook her head, surprised by this strange situation, and returned to discussing the paintings. Well, any of these pictures will definitely cause conversations and even shock. They exactly meet my requirements. I'm just not sure that our company is ready for something so provocative. I live in Dallas, not Los Angeles. And David, he would have a seizure. He's pretty old-fashioned. Hector laughed. Sandy, if you want to excite the public, a nude painting will definitely do it. You haven't found anything else yet. Be brave. Sandy smiled, her lips frowning slightly, and nodded thoughtfully. I have to think about it some more. 
Can I have your business card? Hector took out a business card from his pocket and handed it to Sandy. He looked at her carefully as she put the card in her purse. Then he said quietly, You know, Sandy, you should let me draw you. You must become this picture. Sandy looked at Hector with shock and stammered. What? I? You don't mean without clothes? Hector continued to look at her carefully, smiling and nodding. Oh yes, yes, exactly naked. We could do something really impressive for your bar. Sandy exhaled sharply, trying to pull herself together. Oh no, I don't think so. My husband will definitely not agree with this. He's nothing like your brother. Hector laughed lightly. It's a pity. You are truly a wonderful woman. It would be a magnificent painting. Oh, I see your husband and Maria are already at the cash register. Judging by the smile on Maria's face, you're in for a great Christmas present. As they walked to the checkout, Hector asked, When will you come to Santa Fe again? I will try to prepare a few more painting options for you. We like Santa Fe, so we might stop by again after New Year's. David will have quarterly meetings with a new client, so we will definitely be back in the spring. I'm in no hurry to choose a painting. I need something that really fits. Dallas, Wednesday morning, eight weeks later. David and Sandy were finishing breakfast at the kitchen table. Sandy looked at David angrily and said quietly, David, I'm still angry at you about last night. David raised his head in surprise. Mad at me? For what? Sandy sighed in exasperation. Damn it, you embarrassed me in front of your boss and everyone we know. You understand perfectly what I mean. Last night, they were at David's boss's Mardi Gras party. In true Texan style, the boss had a huge mansion with a huge patio, swimming pool, and large gardens. The outside was lit with portable lights and heaters, allowing hundreds of guests to eat, drink, and dance to the sound of two orchestras inside and outside. It was a real Mardi Gras party. Towards the end of the evening, when everyone was already drunk, Sandy stood by the pool, chatting with the boss, his wife, and another couple. Around them, at a distance, there were about two dozen people, happily drinking and chatting. In the distance, on a bench in the garden, a couple could be seen kissing passionately. Sandy chose a dress for Mardi Gras. It was a purple sequined dress that hugged her hourglass figure. The hem of the dress ended well above mid-thigh, and the deep neckline on the chest and back showed off all her feminine charms for everyone to admire. In her yellow high heels, she looked like Mardi Gras incarnate Laces Les Bonds Temps ruler. David came up behind her and exclaimed loudly, What is this, dear? Of course, everyone stopped their conversations and turned to David. Sandy turned her head in surprise to look over her shoulder at her husband. As she watched, David, with a deft movement, first removed a chain of six packs of sexual protection products and then panties from the neckline of her dress on the back. And not just any panties, but her bright red lace thong meant for special nights. He must have hidden them discreetly when they were getting dressed at home. David held the find up for everyone to see and exclaimed, Wow, honey, you're definitely in the Mardi Gras spirit. Everyone knew about David's pranks and laughed at his skill, although the joke was frankly rude. There were men's cheers, laughter and women's giggles, and someone shouted, Wow, Sandy. Sandy, absolutely humiliated, snatched this surprise from his hands and walked away in righteous feminine rage. Now, at breakfast, Calling David to account, Sandy sat angry, and he, making the face of an offended boy, muttered, Oh, honey, it was just a joke. A simple magic trick. It was a Mardi Gras party. Mardi Gras is supposed to be a little crazy. I didn't mean to embarrass you at all. Sandy shook her head in anger. You clearly hinted to everyone that I was doing something obscene in the bushes. David quickly responded, holding back an apologetic smile. No, no, Sandy. Everyone knew it was just a joke, just a prank. Nobody thought you were actually doing this. A playful smile appeared on David's face, and he asked innocently, You didn't study, did you? Sandy looked at David for a few seconds and then sighed. It was difficult to stay angry with him for long, and it was useless. He was always good-natured and calm. He never wanted to offend anyone. 
but he categorically refused to grow up. Sandy wanted to flip him over her knee and spank him like a naughty boy. This is exactly what he lacked. A beep sounded outside. Sandy said quietly, Your taxi to the airport is already here. As they walked to the door and David picked up his bag, Sandy added, Someday your jokes will backfire on you, David. Okay, have a nice trip. Sandy kissed him and watched as he got into a taxi and headed to the airport. David was leaving for a 10-day business trip to Montreal and Ottawa. He invited her to go with him, but she refused. Who in their right mind volunteers to go to Canada in February? Sandy poured herself another cup of coffee and walked into her office overlooking the backyard pool. She sat down at the computer and turned it on. While it was loading, Sandy took a sip of her coffee. Damn that husband of hers. God, she was so angry with him. And he didn't even understand how much. Someone should really show this spoiled brat that his stupid pranks can hurt people. Sandy checked her email. Nothing urgent. A couple of invitations to parties in the coming weeks. Gina was asking if Sandy wanted to play tennis at the country club tomorrow. She will answer this later. Lots of spam, of course. There was also a letter from the editor of a travel magazine reminding her that her article on Santa Fe would be published in the July issue and the final version should be ready by June 1st. A note from the mother gave the latest news about the family at the ranch. Sandy grew up on a large family cattle ranch west of Picos, Texas. Since childhood, she learned to ride horses and helped herd Black Angus. She competed in hurdles before going to college, but then decided ranch life wasn't for her. My father and brother loved it, and my mother said last year was a very good year for the ranch. Sandy's mom also reported that the January oil payment had arrived and Sandy's share was already in her account. Oil was discovered on the ranch during her grandfather's time. The family was wealthy, no matter how things went on the ranch. Unlike most trophy wives, Sandy was not dependent on her husband. She had her own condition. She was with David because she wanted it, not because she needed it. Sandy sighed. Well, it's time to work on an article about Santa Fe for a travel magazine. She pulled from her desk drawer a thick folder containing notes and materials she had collected during their pre-Christmas trip. She opened a file with text about Santa Fe on her computer. She was already well advanced on an article about Santa Fe as a tourist destination. So, now I need to write about restaurants. Well, they sure found some great spots in Santa Fe. She opened the folder to find the correct name of the restaurant where she and David had eaten amazing trout and venison. Sandy wanted to add the owner's name to the article. He and his wife were very nice. Business cards were attached to the inside of the folder, arranged in alphabetical order for convenience. Her gaze fell on one of the cards. Aztec Art Gallery, Hector Sanchez, artist and owner, fine art and jewelry, 119 West Palace Avenue. Sandy smiled. Oh, this Hector. He really surprised her. It's incredible that he asked her to pose nude for him. It really gave her goosebumps in such a strange yet exciting way. And of course, Hector had that smooth Latino charm that can excite any woman. He was about halfway between her and David's ages. Sandy almost decided that Hector was right. A nude painting would be a great option for her bar. It would definitely cause a storm of emotions among their friends. That would be fun. Oh, David would have resisted, but Sandy knew she could get him to agree if she was persistent. She needed to call Hector and find out if he had found any interesting painting for her, nude or otherwise. Santa Fe, Friday afternoon, seven weeks later. Hector exclaimed joyfully, Welcome, friends, come in, when David and Sandy entered the gallery door. Maria, who was helping another customer at the jewelry counter, raised her head and called, Sandy, how do you like that necklace, earrings, and bracelet set for Christmas? Sandy laughed and replied, Oh my God, Maria, he's gorgeous. Thank you very much for your help, David. Maria nodded happily and returned to her client. Hector took a bottle of wine from the refrigerator in the closet and poured three glasses of white wine when Sandy and David approached him. Glad to see you again, friends. Try our wine Sauvignon Blanc from New Mexico. David, on a business trip to Santa Fe again, 
welcome. David nodded enthusiastically. Yes, sure. We enjoyed our stay in Santa Fe so much last time that we arrived early again. My meeting is only on Monday afternoon. Thanks for the wine. I didn't know they made wine in New Mexico. Hector replied. Oh, we've been making wine since the Spanish missions arrived here in the 17th century. Most people simply don't know about it. We keep the good wine for ourselves. David and Sandy sipped their wine happily. David noted. This wine is really good. We were just walking around before dinner and happened to be nearby. We decided to stop by and say hello. Sandy is still looking for the painting and wonders if you found anything interesting. Hector nodded. Okay, glad you came by. Sandy, our conversation before Christmas inspired me. I just finished a painting that you might like. Grab your wine and let's go have a look. Sandy walked behind Hector and David, who were chatting happily like old friends. She felt like a cat on a hot roof as they approached the back of the gallery where nude paintings hung. Her thoughts returned to recent events. She flew into Santa Fe the same day David flew to Canada seven weeks ago. Hector convinced her over the phone that morning that she should pose for her own nude painting to hang behind her bar. Sandy began to have an idea in her head of what exactly she wanted. Sandy checked into the old historic hotel near Hector's gallery just after five in the evening and met him at the hotel restaurant at six for dinner. They chatted for a bit, placed their order, and chose a bottle of Syrah wine. Hector poured them a glass, and they relaxed. Hector said quietly, I understand you're a little nervous, Sandy, but don't worry. It will be an amazing experience. But I need to understand what you want. How far are you willing to go? What effect do you want to achieve? The artist and the client, in this case also the model, must be completely in sync to create a great work of art. Sandy tried to speak, but her mouth was dry from nerves and her voice trembled treacherously. She stopped, took a large sip of wine, and, feeling more confident, spoke again. I want to be a model for a nude painting, I think, but I don't even know where to start. Hector smiled knowingly. This has already begun. Okay, let's start with the basics. How willing are you to be naked, and how much do you want your identity hidden? Think about what we looked at last time in the gallery. You can be like my ex-wife, pictured from behind, completely naked, but with no visible face, making her anonymous. You can be like Christine at the window, where you can experiment with different degrees of nudity, using elements of clothing and lighting, and also different degrees of anonymity depending on how you are turned, the light, the curtains, and the like. Or you can be like Christine on the bed, completely naked after making love. Once we establish the ground rules, we can come up with a concept. I have some interesting ideas. Who knows, we might have to do some paintings. Sandy blushed, took a deep breath, and said uncertainty. After our conversation on the phone this morning, I... I was thinking about this the entire flight here. She took another sip of wine, finishing the first glass. Hector refilled her wine and added a little to his almost full glass. Sandy took another sip and then answered decisively and confidently. I want to be completely naked, and I want it to be obvious that I just had sex like Christine on the bed, but I want to remain anonymous if possible. Hector said with interest, but delicately. That sounds good, Sandy. It's doable. Sandy's voice trembled. I, I understand what that means. I understand that in order for the painting to look sexy, it's like Christine and Monica in their paintings. You know, you and me. Well, I understand everything, and I agree with this. Hector laughed warmly. Sandy, of course, it helps improve the connection between the artist and his model. And frankly, in both photography and painting, it is sometimes difficult to portray a realistic sexual image without real experience. If you want to look like you just made love, it better be like that. We can organize this. Now tell me what you really want to say with this painting. The conversation smoothly turned to discussing possible ideas over dinner and a glass of cognac after it. As they were finishing the evening and getting ready to leave, Hector stopped, kissed Sandy, and said, See you in the gallery at 8.30. Let's start with conceptual sketches and develop the idea further. 
It will take time. It will be interesting and will lead to what you want. Sandy's first visit lasted a week. She made three more trips, each lasting two to three days. Of course, her trips coincided with David's business trips. Sandy returned from her last trip a little over a week ago. Hector had managed to make posing nude for his own painting look so great that it seemed like a big, exciting adventure over the phone, but today, as her husband walked ahead of her, Sandy began to have doubts. Hector said that he would make it impossible to recognize her, but he didn't let her see the picture until today. She had no idea what awaited her and David in the next few minutes. God, how she hoped that Hector had thought of everything, she thought gloomily. Sandy smiled. Well, she definitely really enjoyed the extra bonuses of being Hector's model for the past two months. She had never cheated before, although she knew that several of her trophy wives' friends had lovers on the side. She suspected that David sometimes enjoyed a little adventure during his business trips. This is quite in his style, and he would not attach much importance to it. So she didn't feel guilty about her own little affair. Sandy almost laughed out loud. Calling what Hector did to her a little romance was clearly not appropriate. His performance clearly deserved more. Every morning when she was in town, she posed for Hector for about two hours. If it went on any longer, he said, she would become too nervous to work. They usually had sex before posing to create the right mood for the painting. And then Hector made passionate love to her after the session because for two hours he was engrossed in how he depicted her naked body on canvas. He said he just couldn't stand it. Perhaps that was the real reason the sessions lasted no more than two hours, Sandy thought, grinning to herself. After the oil on the canvas dried, they went to lunch, and then Hector showed her the secrets of Santa Fe. Her article about Santa Fe promised to be a real masterpiece. Each night they dined at a different restaurant and returned early to her room in the old historic hotel next to the gallery. Hector was absolutely fascinated by Sandy. He felt like he just couldn't get enough of her. He called her a mythical siren, seducing men with her beauty and leading them to death. Sandy liked the way she affected men, and she herself enjoyed carnal pleasures. What they did in her hotel room at night had nothing to do with romantic love or the tenderness of the pages of Ladies' Home Journal. Sandy came out of her thoughts when Hector stopped at a small hall at the end of the gallery. He turned on the light and invited them in. David went first. Sandy glanced at Hector. He winked at her and smiled encouragingly. He then nodded, motioning for her to follow David. Sandy, trembling with a mixture of excitement and fear, entered the hall. David stopped and whistled quietly. Sandy took a deep breath and carefully looked at the picture hanging on the wall. There she was, in all her magnificent nude glory, on a 36 by 48 inch canvas. She lay on rumpled sheets in her room in an old historic hotel. In the painting, Sandy was lying facing the window, through which bright sunlight was pouring. The sunlight illuminated her body, highlighting all the details. The rest of the room remained in deep shadow. In the painting, Sandy was lying on her right side, with her right hand covering her eyes from the bright light. This slightly hid her face and ensured anonymity. Her legs were slightly bent, and her left hand rested on her left hip. The wedding ring sparkled in the sun. Hector replaced the ornate engagement ring and engagement stone David had given her with a simple gold ring. Lying there, Sandy smiled contentedly in an ecstatic post-coital slumber. One day, during a conversation after another sex, Hector asked her what color hair she would like if she had not been born blonde. Now she understood why. In the painting, Sandy's long, curly blonde hair was transformed into a beautiful cascade of coppery brown hues. My God, she looked great as a redhead. Anyone who knew Sandy would have noticed the similarities between the woman in the painting and Sandy herself. However, the change in hair color and the hand covering her face gave her the opportunity to deny the obvious. Sandy continued to examine the painting. An indistinguishable man sat in the shadows in the background, pulling on a cowboy boot. He was wearing jeans, but no shirt, revealing a muscular and slender back. Sandy smiled. She had spent enough time with this naked man to recognize Hector, even in the dim light, and with his turned-away person. 
It would be scandalous and funny to watch all her and David's friends discuss the painting and wonder who this woman is and who her lover is. All the while, she and a select few friends would know that the painting was of the real, naked and well-rested Sandy with her artist lover. Hector came and stood next to David, muttering quietly. The painting is called My Neighbor's Wife. What do you think of her? Sandy pursed her lips to keep from laughing at the name. She replied with a completely serious tone. I'm sure there must be some kind of story behind such a name. Hector answered with a cheerful intonation. My neighbor often goes on business trips. As you can see, his wife is beautiful and loves adventure. She's not the type to sit at home alone, watch soap operas, and get fat. Then you can guess. David laughed. You're lucky. Your husband often goes on business trips, and most importantly, does he suspect anything? Ah, he travels quite often, but he's not the type to suspect anything. David was fascinated by the picture. He muttered to Hector, Hmm, if I had such a wife, I would, of course, be worried that someone might take her away. Sandy couldn't help but laugh. She exclaimed joyfully, I really like it. We'll take it, David said firmly. Oh, I'm not sure, Sandy. We can't hang a naked woman, no matter how beautiful, above our bar. Sandy began to persuade David to agree. Hector explained that nude paintings are now in vogue in the art market. Surprisingly, in the end, David offered little resistance. He was also fascinated by this beautiful naked woman in the painting. The trio returned to the ticket counter at the front of the gallery. Hector promised to pack the painting and send it to Dallas. She was supposed to arrive by the end of next week. Sandy happily said she would hang it behind the bar as soon as she arrived. Sandy watched with a satisfied smile as her husband wrote a check for $15,000 to the man who had slept with his wife for the past two months and created this amazing artistic document of their relationship. Oh yes, revenge for David's Mardi Gras prank was deliciously sweet and promised to bear even more fruit. David signed the check and asked, What date is today? I can't remember. Sandy winked at Hector. Today is the first of April, dear. She muttered under her breath, April joke, honey. Dallas, exactly one year later. Sandy was sitting at the bar in the living room, sipping a martini. She glanced at her watch. It's almost five. David was due back any minute. She prepared a jug of martinis for them to drink together. Guests were supposed to arrive at the party by seven. Sandy had taken a long bath, and now all she had to do was put on a new dress and put on makeup to be ready for the party. There was plenty of time to enjoy a relaxing drink with my husband when he got home, and still plenty of time to get ready. Sandy held up the final program from the catering company for tonight's party. There will be two bars with a bartender and an assistant one here in the living room in front of the painting, and a mobile bar provided by the catering company on the pool patio. Refreshments will be in the dining room, and four waiters with trays of canapes will circulate among the guests until midnight. According to the forecast, the weather should be clear, with a full moon, but a little cool. Yesterday we installed propane heaters on the patio. This will ensure comfort for guests both inside and outside. Catering was due to arrive at six, and they already knew exactly what to do. The cleaners and gardeners have been working for the past two days. The house and yard were immaculate inside and out. The logistics of the party were completely prepared. Then she checked the guest list again. Positive responses were received from 44 couples, and one couple called asking to bring a guest. Of course you can. It will be a great group of 85 people. Guests will include David's boss, several of his co-workers, and many friends from their neighborhood and country club. It's going to be a fun party. Sandy smiled happily. The evening promised to be memorable. Sandy looked at the nude picture of herself behind the bar. It turned out to be even more of a success than she could have dreamed. The picture gave rise to a lot of discussions and speculation about who this woman is and who her lover is. Sometimes she was asked direct questions about her resemblance to a nude figure, and Sandy managed to sidestep them more or less convincingly. She prepared a few standard answers, such as, I wish it were me, this girl is much more beautiful than me, or, I wish I had red hair like that, 
she's just amazing. As far as she knew, only her two closest friends, Gina and Beth, knew the truth about Sandy posing for a painting and sleeping with the artist. She wanted to trust someone, and these two friends, like her, had lovers on the side, and besides, they were her best friends. They were unlikely to spill her secret. Both women were young and beautiful trophy wives married to much older and richer men. Gina cheated on her husband regularly. With her work schedule and love of golf, she had no problems maintaining a strong team of lovers. Beth's situation was a little more complicated, and she was more picky about her romances. Her husband did not know, or perhaps pretended not to know, about her periodic pranks. However, he was almost 80, so it was logical to assume that this old asshole realized that his young and energetic beauty needed more sex than he could provide her at his age. Beth behaved cautiously and suspected that her husband silently tolerated her infidelities. She worked as a petroleum engineer for her future husband's company, attracted the owner's attention five years ago, and soon took the place of his first, older wife in the rich man's bed. Recently, Paula joined their company and accidentally discovered the truth. Paula and her husband moved to Dallas from Chicago about six weeks ago. Sandy, Gina, and Beth invited Paula to lunch at the country club to welcome her to town. During the conversation, Beth accidentally mentioned that the painting depicts Sandy. Paula had not yet seen the picture, so soon after lunch all four lovely young women went to Sandy's house. Sandy opened a bottle of white burgundy wine and poured glasses for everyone as they sat down at the bar opposite the painting. They each drank two glasses of wine at dinner so that everyone relaxed a little and the joyful glow of the wine enlivened their company. Inspecting the painting, Sandy told the story from the very beginning, from her first trip to Santa Fe in December, the Mardi Gras party and Gina and Beth saw David's prank and were 100% on Sandy's side the phone call to Hector, the creation of the painting, how David bought the painting of his unfaithful wife from her lover, and finally how the painting was put on public display. Gina giggled. Come on, Sandy. This was a short version for Reader's Digest. Honey, we need the full version, like Defoe's in Mall Flanders. Sandy smiled and opened another bottle of white burgundy. She filled everyone's glasses. She then told Hector's joke. This forced the girls to go behind the bar and carefully examine the painting. Gina exclaimed, Oh my God, Sandy, it's really you. There's no doubt about it. Beth took a step back, carefully examining the picture, and muttered quietly, Yes, but you need to know what to look for and almost press your nose to the picture to see it. Oh, that mischievous, mischievous Hector. Paula added when everyone sat down again at the bar. Come on, Sandy, tell me something more juicy, like this joke. Laughing and giggling happily, Sandy told all the details of her adultery with her artist lover. The story was accompanied by exclamations, bursts of laughter and giggles from the other three women. Beth, catching her breath after Sandy's picturesque story, said, Wow. And besides the four of us, and of course Hector, no one suspects that it is Sandy whom we all look at and because of whom men get excited. Paula exclaimed, Sandy, does your husband really not suspect anything? Doesn't he realize that it's you there or that you cheated on him with the artist? Besides the hair color, it's obvious you're in the picture. Sandy laughed. No suspicions. He has no idea. He is a rich and powerful man that everyone listens to. I think he just can't imagine that his wife could actually cheat on him. He considers himself too important for this to happen to him. This is probably the same male ego. Sandy smiled cynically. But things get even worse. This summer, we hosted an Independence Day party with a BBQ by the pool. I returned to the house to get some more mustard from the pantry and found David and six other men at the bar drinking beer and looking at my painting. Of course, I stopped and began to eavesdrop to find out what they were saying about me. Sandy shook her head in disdain. This poor, naive husband. He stood there and told his friends, the painting is called My Neighbor's Wife. My friend Hector, the artist who painted it, has sex with this beauty every time her husband goes on business trips. I had to pinch myself to keep from laughing out loud. 
Oh, I so wanted to intervene and tell them that that married beauty is my own ass, but I decided to let this moment pass, Paula exclaimed. But Sandy, how do you hide expenses, payment cards, plane tickets, hotels, and all that? He could not have failed to notice these traces. Sandy smiled. It's simple. I have a credit card and checking account in my name only for my work-related writing needs. He never sees these bills. Sandy laughed quietly. Of course, from time to time I transfer money from general accounts to personal accounts to cover the costs of my entertainment. I just love the idea of David paying the cost of his wife cheating on him with another man. This amuses me. This latest revelation caused even more laughter from the other women. Sandy opened the third bottle of white burgundy and refilled the glasses. The women enjoyed their spontaneous, fun celebration filled with wine and laughter. Gina added, smiling. Sandy, Beth, and I cheat on our cuckolds for fun. You did this in retaliation for your husband's stupid Mardi Gras joke. Oh, this is great revenge for his stupid prank. Paula asked. What does the word cuckold even mean, and where did this story with horns come from? Gina, who had a long list of lovers, laughed. I can say that I am an expert on this issue. This expression dates back to English traditions starting around the 15th century. The term cuckold probably comes from the English word cuckoo. The female cuckoo has the habit of laying eggs in other people's nests. Accordingly, male cuckoos, or in our case, our cuckolded husbands, find themselves deceived by their females, that is, us, when we sleep with other men. As for the horns, they can be either ram or deer. These horns traditionally symbolize strength, masculinity, and sometimes the devil. In the simplest explanation, a male deer fights another male for the right to mate with a female. If one male deer loses, the winner gets the right to mate with the loser's female. So the horns symbolize a man who has been supplanted by a stronger and more masculine male who now has access to the female. Beth added with a smile. So when Gina says we cuckold our husbands, she's simply saying we have sex with someone other than our husbands. We wives actually behave wrongly, but our society always makes fun of cuckolds, not cheating wives. Gina supported. In the popular interpretation, it is believed that the cuckold is not masculine enough to satisfy his wife, and therefore she seeks other, stronger men to satisfy her desires. Consequently, the wife's infidelity is justified by her husband's sexual inadequacy. Beth continued, In my and Jin's case, the main reason is that we need, or at least want, more sex. Sandy's motivation was revenge. After all, great sex is the best part about cuckolding for wives. Paula laughed. Oh, my new friends are real mischief makers, but very interesting conversationalists. I like it. Gina looked closely at Sandy and whispered conspiratorially. Okay, Sandy, the truth and nothing but the truth. Did you go to Santa Fe? Alone? Sandy smiled mysteriously and then after a pause answered quietly. Let's say let's just say that Hector enriches my life both artistically and entertainingly. So yes, I went there, and repeatedly. These words were met with friendly laughter and shaking of heads from the other three women. Beth grinned. Oh, you naughty girl. And how often do you go to Santa Fe to recharge? Sandy smiled. About every four to six weeks. Mainly when David goes on business trips. Twice I came up with work trips when David stayed home too long and I wanted a little mischief. Paula raised her eyebrows and asked, and you and Hector are working on a new project in nude style again. Sandy smiled cheerfully. Right now we're halfway through creating a painting that will hang in a bar at a ski resort in Colorado. It's not as revealing as my first one, but again I'm completely naked in it. When we finish, I will definitely show you the photo. Paula shook her head in slight disbelief. You're playing with fire. What will you do if your husband finds out? Men don't like to share their wives with other men, and sometimes they can get very horny when they find out about it. Sandy nodded with a thoughtful expression. Yes, it can be unpleasant. But David is not the one who will fight. He is a city man, spends all his time in offices and on business trips. Sandy shrugged. I'm a girl from a ranch in West Texas. 
I shoot a pistol better than David. I lift more weight in the gym than he does. Plus, I have a six-foot-six cowboy brother who adores his little sister. I think I'm safe. Sandy continued with a sly smile. You know, I really like this new order of things, a permanent husband, and from time to time an artist lover at a distance. You don't want your lover to be underfoot too often. This new scheme definitely adds a spark to my life. So if this does come out, David has two options. Either he accepts it like Beth's husband, or I sue him for most of his money through divorce. I already have my own money, but that won't stop me from emptying his wallet, just out of spite. Sandy returned to her thoughts at the bar with a satisfied smile and took a sip of her martini. It was a funny and very alcoholic bachelorette party where they discussed the film. Luckily, all three girls and their husbands were planning to come to tonight's party. Although, after a year, the shock from the picture began to fade a little. Today, Sandy was going to attract attention to herself, not only through the picture, but also in real life. Her designer delivered her new evening dress yesterday, and they made the final adjustments to make sure it fit perfectly. This dress was bolder than anything she had ever worn in public. Long, silk, scarlet, with a deep neckline reaching to the navel. The back was even more open than the front. The slits on the sides reached almost to the thigh. It was impossible to wear anything under the dress. The only thing separating her from complete nudity was the thin, tight-fitting silk fabric, which left a large part of her body on the verge of indecentness. This dress would look right on the Oscar's red carpet, but definitely not at a cocktail party in Dallas. Few women of any age could wear something like this and look good. Sandy could thank good jeans and hard work in the gym for being able to afford it. Today, she will need to be extremely careful about her posture and movements to avoid an outfit disaster. Even so, those standing close might notice some very intimate parts of her body, especially if she relaxes a little. However, almost all of her private parts were already exposed in the painting. Oh yeah, she's going to make a splash today. Sandy heard David come into the house from the garage. She called, I'm here behind the bar, honey. Come have a drink with me before the guests arrive. Sandy giggled quietly with a mischievous smile. After all, it's not so much fun to prank your own husband if he doesn't even know that he's the butt of the joke. Sandy poured a martini for David and set it aside. She spent four hours in the beauty salon that morning, dyeing her blonde hair a bright copper shade like the one in the painting. She really liked the way she looked with red hair. She replaced her usual wedding ring with a simple gold ring and, standing behind the bar, she took off her robe, letting it fall to her feet. Naked, Sandy easily climbed onto the bar and repeated the pose from the painting, spreading her fingers slightly so she could see David's reaction. David entered the living room and froze, his mouth open. His gaze darted from his naked, now red-haired wife to the painting of her hanging above the bar. Sandy laughed, sat down and said with a smile, Happy April 1st, dear. She jumped off the counter, picked up her martini glass, and walked over to her stunned husband. Oh my God, Sandy, David began. Sandy laughed and put a finger to his lips, whispering, SHH, SHH, darling. Today I am the star of the evening and decide when and how to reveal my tricks. She handed David his martini and, grinning, explained. At Mardi Gras the joke was on me, but this time, darling, the joke is on you. She shook her new red hair and, smiling seductively, said, And soon everyone will find out that your friend Hector had sex with your wife while you were on business trips and then sold you a painting depicting her infidelity. David's eyes lit up in surprise as he heard his wife's own words spoken, and his face sank as he realized the truth. Laughing, Sandy walked back behind the bar, picked up her robe, and took a sip of her martini. She waved her hand at David, urging him to come over. Sit here, dear. Have a drink with your wife. Admire my painting with new understanding now that you know the truth. I've got a pitcher of martinis ready in case you need some courage to get through this evening. David followed her to the bar and sat down with a heavy sigh. He took a sip of his martini and began. Listen, Sandy, I... Sandy put her finger to his lips again. Quiet, dear. 
not today. If you want, we can discuss this tomorrow. Sandy continued with a cynical smile. But let's not be hypocrites. Most of the men in our company are older, rich, and powerful men with young, beautiful trophy wives. Many of these men have mistresses, use the services of prostitutes, and enjoy casual love affairs while on business trips. Likewise, many of these trophy wives diversify their free time with lovers. In our little world of Peyton Place, me cheating on you isn't such a big deal. Sandy watched her silent husband with interest. Poor David looked like a boy who had been caught playing pranks and was being taken to the headmaster for a spanking. Sandy laughed sarcastically and continued mockingly. Oh, darling, this is the spanking you've deserved all these years. All those people, including me, whom you made fun of and teased with your antics, will now not show you an ounce of pity. You can expect a lot of dirty jokes from men and women, and there will be a lot of chuckles behind your back. David looked at Sandy sadly and muttered, What should I do now? Sandy shrugged with exaggerated nonchalance and said quietly, The choice is yours. I'm running the show tonight, and you know where this is going. You have three options on how to react to this. She raised her middle finger. The first option, you can cause a scandal and file for divorce. Then I will take most of your money, get a house and live happily as a cheerful and rich divorced lady. This option also means that you will lose access to that very sweet that is hanging on the wall. Sandy raised her index finger. Option two, you can hide in the master bedroom with a bottle of gin and evade the guests and my revelations. But the fact of what I did to you will not go away, and sooner or later you will have to face it. Then she raised her ring finger. And the third option, you can admit that this is just a fair payback for all the evil pranks and tricks you have played on people over the years. Many of them were based on sexual innuendos, and they were quite vulgar. I just reversed your little prank at the Mardi Gras party. You then hinted that I was cheating on you behind your back, and here you go now I really did it. And not with just anyone, but with the artist who captured it on canvas. So I suggest you just accept it and deal with it. Sandy gave David a dazzling smile. Darling, don't worry so much. You're far from the only cuckold at this party. It is said that the rate of infidelity among married women has increased by 40% in recent years. Statistics, of course, vary, but somewhere from 14 to 40% of wives cheat on their husbands. Given our company's momentum, I suspect the numbers are closer to the high end, if not higher. She grinned. So, out of 45 women at a party, statistics suggest that 7 18 of them are cheating on their husbands. I know for sure that three of us are having active romances. Rumor has it that at least a dozen others were or had recently been in similar relationships. Only God knows how much I haven't heard yet, Sandy patted David's arm with a comforting smile. You see, dear, you have a lot of company. It's just that you may be one of the few husbands who knows for sure that he is a cuckold, David replied dryly. To be convinced of this is an honor that I would definitely do without. Sandy shook her hair and smiled slyly. Well, honey, since I'm going to show all my cards at the party tonight, I thought you should be the first to know. Sandy looked at David with a satisfied smile. She mockingly said with a feigned sensual intonation, Poor boy, what a blow to your male ego. Well, dear, this time I am the joker, and you are the victim of my joke. David shook his head in surprise and raised his glass with a wry smile, clinking it with Sandy's. Touché, I think I really lost at my own game. Sandy finished her martini and put the glass in the sink. Then she gave David a bright smile and said cheerfully, You definitely lost, and today the joke is on you. She stood up and headed towards the exit to prepare for the arrival of the guests. I'm sure everyone will really like my new red hair and my painting, especially when they find out that the naked woman in the painting is really your wife. Sandy reached the door, but turned around and looked at David. He sat at the bar and, lost in thought, looked at the picture of his naked wife on the wall. Sandy guessed that at least half of the guests at the party tonight would ask her directly whether she was the woman in the painting. She will pretend to be embarrassed and admit that it is really her. 
About half of these people will then ask if the man in the painting was her lover. After some excuses for the sake of decency, Sandy admits that it is true. Some, especially wives and lovers, will dig deeper, and Sandy will give them the opportunity to fish out juicy details, including Hector's joke. Everything that happens and is said at this party will spread throughout the city before dawn. Social media will take care of this much more effectively than a full page of advertising in the Dallas Morning News. Sandy thought with a satisfied smile that very soon she would publicly initiate her husband into the ancient and venerable order of cuckolds. Oh, the list of members of this ancient order was huge and knew no discrimination. Cuckolds were a variety of men, smart and stupid, rich and poor, beautiful and ugly, honest and dishonest, scoundrels and heroes. Their professions ran the gamut, from kings to peasants, from farmers to merchants, from politicians to soldiers, from professors to innkeepers, from bankers to beggars, it didn't matter. Sandy giggled. Most of these poor souls probably didn't even know they were members of this ancient society. But with David, it was different tonight. She would publicly expose his status to his friends, colleagues, and their wives. Sandy turned and walked briskly up the stairs to the master bedroom to change. She giggled, whispering quietly to herself. Oh yes, men may have power in this world, but only the wife decides when, how and where to give her husband honorary horns and make him a member of the ancient and venerable order of cuckolds. Subscribe to our channel so that your love doesn't cheat on you and go ahead and listen to the next story because this story is nothing compared to the next one. If you're under 18, don't even think click to the next one. Click to the next one. Click to the next one.